All right, Salim Rezaia here, and this is a bit of an older myth, but should we be doing ABGs or VBGs in patients with DKA? Now, the best study on this was a 2010 systematic review, included only three trials with 265 patients. And when we look at the difference between VBG compared to ABG, and we look at pH specifically, the difference is only 0.02, and the mean bicarbonate difference is only negative two. So the real question is, does this minimal difference change clinical practice? And there happens to be a study with 200 patients with presumed DKA. And here's what they found. In the 200 patients, there was a treatment change when you compared ABG to VBG in five patients or 2.5%. The change was interesting. In two of the five patients, it was changing from sub-Q to IV insulin. And in three of the five, it was changing from IV to sub-Q insulin. Now, I don't know about you, but I am not treating DKA with sub-Q insulin. In terms of disposition change, there was only one out of the 200, and it was instead of discharging the patient home, they admitted to a telemetry floor because the pH was a little bit lower on the ABG than what they expected. Now, the flip side of this, ABGs, they're super painful, and there are potential complications, although not that common. You can cause radial artery thrombosis, pseudoaneurysms, dissections, and the list goes on. And so how many people are actually doing Allen's tests before they do their radial stick? Because I'm certainly not, and I suspect many aren't. The bottom line is, for DKA, VBGs are just as good as ABGs, and we should not be causing harm to our patients or pain to our patients when we have a test that we can already do with the venous blood draw that we're already doing. Let me know your thoughts and comments. Until next time.